let's do a little bit of a deep dive on the collision surfaces just so we can kind of understand it a little bit better. So I'm going to go in here to my tools menu and we'll just grab this demo head and we're going to drag this on our canvas, go into edit mode and we're going to go ahead and use this as a collision surface. So of course all we need to do is we can go in here to subtool, we can append uh, plane 3D, we can alt tap this plane 3D, let's go out of perspective mode and so we can see this a little bit better. Let's turn on some of that dynamic thickness we know about now. So dynamic subdivision over here, turn on dynamic. Let's turn smooth down to zero. Let's crank that thickness up so we can see that plane a little bit better. And then we'll hold down shift and rotate. So now we have a plane uh, that's gonna use this head as a collision volume. So if we go over here, let's take this brush menu undocked over here on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna open this up and then we're gonna take our, it's just double clicking on these little arrows. And then over here in the dynamics menu, just click and drag that over and Right down here we have collision volume. So we have collision volume, resolution, inflate, and recalc. So with collision volume turned on, anything that's not selected, uh, so we have our plane selected and then everything else that's visible in our scene is gonna be calculated as a collision volume. So we're gonna go ahead and say, uh, turn on collision volume. It's gonna calculate, you can see it kind of pause for a minute. And then uh, we can go ahead and run our simulation. So we have gravity turned on, it's gonna treat this as a simulated mesh, we can run the simulation, and of course that gravity is super fast, didn't give us a whole lot of time, and this is a very simple geometry, so we're moving too quick. So again, like we mentioned before in the earlier videos, uh, you can either, two things, you can move your simulation iterations up, so it's going to run more calculations to maintain those uh, relationships, so we can maintain that surface area during the simulation, and or you can go over here to your gravity strength and just turn that down so it runs a little bit slower and gives your uh, computer time to catch up. So go ahead and crank this up and we'll go ahead and turn this down to maybe like 1.13 and now as it falls over it's going to have time to kind of simulate. Now when we did that you're going to notice it's kind of having a hard time with this uh, mesh down here. So one thing it might be if I go down here to my mesh and we go down we'll notice that it's an open hole so and also if we don't want to if we want to make sure that's the case. We can go in here to display properties, turn off double. You see it's an open mesh here. So when it goes and recalculates, it may be thinking of like interior faces that it needs to recalculate as opposed to, you know, closing the gap down here. So if you want to try going into uh, geometry, well, first of all, delete lower, or if you don't want to mess with this, and you want to keep this uh, viable. Let's go ahead and just duplicate this off. We'll hide this original demo head and this new one here. We'll go ahead and delete lower and we're going to go in here to geometry, modify topology close holes. So that's going to allow this collision volume calculator to have a little bit of an easier time and not have to worry about like interior meshes or trying to do anything fancy. They can see this as one volume and go, okay, yeah, you want me to collide with this volume? No problem. So now we're going to alt tap on our plane again. We're going to hit recalc. And now when we hit run simulation, you're going to see, oh, it has a much easier time calculating that volume. There's no interior spaces for it to have to think about or try and resolve. One more thing to consider is that collision volume is held in memory. So if we go through here and we say, okay, turn off the demo head, turn off the eyeballs, or, you know, keep the eyeballs on, uh, and then we go over here and say we're in the simulation, it's still going to think that head is, well, it's still calculating around that head we originally had. In fact, if you go out of edit mode, so you always switch, we go in here, and we go, hey, I want to simulate a sphere, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, and you're like, okay, I want it to uh, collide with the floor here, and we have gravity on, floor collision on, but you don't have, we still have collision volume on, we run the simulation, and it's going to go, oh, what is it doing? It's something weird over here. It's still colliding with that volume that you have. So if, in fact, if we go over here to contract, it'll, it'll go ahead and shrink wrap around that collision volume, because it's still in memory. If you want to make sure it's not colliding with a collision volume, just go ahead and turn it off and then run your simulation and it'll run uh, as expected. And if I go and turn it on, it's going to say, hey, sorry, collision can only be calculated for non-active visible subtools. So it's dumped it out of memory and now it's looking for more subtools to create collision volumes from. Let's go ahead and turn this demo head back on. And let's go down here to geometry, dynamic subdivision. We're going to turn this thickness down to zero. We're going to run this, oh, <laughs> let's turn con contract off. Uh, so again, we're going to do gravity. Let's, you know what, let's do smooth subdiv of two so we get a little bit nicer wrinkles. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn collision volume on. It's going to recalculate our scene. We're going to run the simulation. Actually, this isn't even the best uh, way to kind of show this off. Let's go over here to... Actually, I'm gonna, I want to keep this around, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go in here to Load Tools from Project. I'm going to go to my C Program Files, Pixel Logic, ZBrush 2021. We're going to go over here to our Z Projects folder, and there's a Sim Contract. Let's go ahead and load that up. So I get, this, I get the tools in here, but I don't, you know, replace my entire working space. 
So essentially all you're gonna do is you're gonna have this dress selected. You're gonna go over here, turn off gravity. Uh, we can turn off floor collision too. Uh, the collision volume we need to recalculate because we have a new collision volume. So with this selected, I'll calculate that as a collision volume. We're gonna do contract in the Z direction. And again, Z is front to back. So we're gonna go ahead and run the simulation. And again, if you want it to run faster, you know, the simulate, you can drop the simulation iterations down so your computer doesn't have to think as hard. Uh, but that's the result you're going to get. Now this cloth over here, if we go down here to dynamic, remember you can turn the smoothness up and that'll kind of alleviate some of that stress along here. This geometry isn't the greatest. It's got, uh, you know, it's just kind of a sliced and dynameshed almost uh, result. So we can, again, use the smooth subdiv to alleviate that dynamic thickness, which again, this, that thickness is all fake. You're also going to notice the thickness is coming out from the middle, so we can use this offset to be like, I want the innermost part to be the simulated geometry, or I want the outermost part to be simulated, or I want to split the difference right down the middle. And if we turn dynamic off, and we have, you know, just for to see a little bit better, display properties double, let's go in here to ScreenShader 4. And we'll go ahead and turn off the poly paint for that subtool here. You can see there's a pretty big gap around her body. So that's what this inflate is going to control. Uh, we take that inflate down to zero. It should recalculate on the fly. So when you run the simulation again, it'll be like, okay, I'll go ahead and recalculate. Again, we can use that dynamic thickness over here to turn that back on. And again, we can split that difference and we can go down here to this offset and say, you know what? The interior mesh is the dynamic and then the dynamic or is the simulated mesh. And then everything out here is the dynamic mesh. So that's what that offset of 100 is gonna do. So now you can see it's much closer to the skin. That's where that inflate comes into play on your collision volume. Now let's go back to our head demo. And right now when we run this uh, simulation, let's go ahead and recalculate, because we're now we're recalculating the head, not the body. And we run, oops, turn gravity back on, and we run the simulation here. And you know what, we can probably crank this down. Let's put this back down at 100. So now you can see uh, with that inflated zero, it's very, very close to the underlying geometry. If you turn on transparency, you can see it's just sitting right on that surface. So again, if you want to add a little inflate and then run the simulation again, it'll kind of pull back up. Uh, oh, we still have contract turned on. So now you can see with that inflate at 0.9, uh, it's not going to collide with the uh, underlying surface. Now let's uh, discuss this uh, resolution a little bit more. So if we crank this resolution down and then we run the simulation, you're gonna see <laughs> it almost simulates around like a, kind of a lumpy boxy surface and it's way far away from the head. So what's going on here? Uh, to kind of visualize this, we have our demo head selected. There's a couple of different ways we can do this. So essentially, again, all the visible uh, subtools in our scene, let's go in here to merge visible. I'm just gonna go to this merge result here and we go ahead and get rid of this plane. So just control shift. Um, Control shift tap the plane, control shift drag, and then uh, delete hidden. So when it's going to calculate this, it's looking at this volume here. It's got the eyes and it's got the head. And kind of what it's doing, I don't know how accurate this is, but again, just to kind of visually represent quickly, it's going to voxelize this result. There's two ways we can do that. We can actually go down here uh, to a unified skin, and it will keep the resolution 128. We'll turn smoothness down to zero, and we're going to say make unified skin. So with a resolution of 128, Here's the skin, and you know that's a 128 res. So if we go over here and we say, okay, give me a 1024 res uh, unified skin. Oops. So we can say for this uh, head, let's try a 1024 resolution unified skin. And then we look at that, and it's like, oh, much more refined. It's still a little bit boxy, but you know, from this uh, vantage point, you know, 1024 is going to give you plenty of resolution to go through and uh, simulate over those uh, volumes. It's pretty accurate. However, if we say, okay, let's take this head and let's drop this resolution down to like 16 and make a unified skin. Uh, it's gonna be fast, it'll calculate really quickly, but that's the result you're gonna get. So when you want to simulate this plane here, so let's go ahead and select our plane. We'll turn everything else back off. So essentially under the hood, it, the, at a super low resolution collision volume, you know, in fact, I can take this collision volume uh, back up to 2048. What I'm gonna do is with this, I'm gonna say, okay, recalculate this collision volume and then run simulation. So essentially when you do a collision volume of 16, this is the result you're actually colliding with. You can't see it, but Essentially, you're giving it so little resolution. It's going to be fast. Like I said before, it's going to calculate this very quickly, uh, but it's not going to give you something uh, very usable. So that's, uh, again, under the hood, uh, what it's accomplishing when you go through here and you say, okay, demo head, run a collision volume, recalculate, go super quick, but then it's going to give you that boxy result. 
that's what's happening underneath the hood. So you want to keep this, you know, 1024 was pretty good, right? So we go in here and we recalculate this and then run the simulation. It's like, okay, that's a little bit more um, sustainable. So, you know, play with this setting if you're not getting uh, the results that you're uh, thinking about. Or if, you know, you have it cranked up, you know, it's taking a little while to actually calculate. You may not need all that calculation. You can just drop this down and get something decent. Uh, but, you know, don't drop it too low.